Energize Show. Up the Irish. Okay, what's going on, guys? Welcome to a brand new episode of Energize. Ross, introduce the guest, man. Today, we have undefeated Welsh phenom, former Cage Warriors bantamweight champion. It's Jack Tank Shore. Jack, how are you doing and how was life in Las Vegas? Yes, but lads, I'm uh, I'm all good. Acclimatizing nicely now. Getting used to the heat is a bit warmer than uh, than what I'm used to in Wales, and there's a lot more. So I've probably seen more sun this week than I've seen in the last six months. But um, can't complain. You know, camp is winding down a bit now. Just uh, just shredding the weight off and um, staying sharp, ready for the fight. Jack, I actually watched the that little mini docu series that I think Kurt Pike did uh, yeah. for Shout yourself. Curtis. Uh, and that was that was unbelievable. How different is Las Vegas to Abertilly? Oh, very different. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, apart from the weather, it's just everything's a lot more like I don't know. It, I find it the same when I go to like London and Cardiff. Everything's under a mile an hour, and, and being like being a Valley boy, born and bred, you know, I'm I'm used to just I don't mind hundred mile an hour in the gym, but outside the gym, I like to just relax and to take things as they come and go with the flow. There's not, there's none of that in Vegas. We uh. Like we went to the strip on Sunday for a look. Like last time we weren't allowed to go. So uh, we went to the strip and it was just bonkers. Absolutely bonkers. The amount of people, the amount of... Fi- I, I, I don't know. Luckily, I can't eat. But I don't know how anyone can go to that strip and think, you know what, I'll, I'll go to that restaurant. Because there's literally like a thousand on. And like there's food courts, restaurants. It, there's hotels and there's like 10 restaurants within the hotel. So it fries my head. It's, too, it's a little bit mad for me out here, to be honest. Like, But, um, you know, I, I, I love coming out here to fight. So... We 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 just, we just get on with it. That sounds it? worse than uh, I'm a celeb uh, bus hooker trial uh, when you're cutting weight and there's all the lovely restaurants. It's like I'm a fighter, get me out of here. It is. <laughs> it's literally, I'd say to people, is is the it is the worst part. It's modern day torture. Like in all fairness, my my corner team are pretty good. You know, they they're not like stuffing their faces in front of me. But you know, when you're just seeing fucking pizzas and burgers and subway and chicken wings everywhere, it's it's just like ah. Oh, if only I was here like this time next week and, and I wasn't on the flight home, I could uh, can make the most of it. But, you know, I, I'm sure I'll come here when... I, I said to my... Um, one of my cornermen is uh, my teammate, Levi. I brought him out here because my, my father's just had a knee, knee off. So he's been my uh, my punch bag for the week. And um, <laughs> I said to him, I'm up and getting the UFC now. Look, you can fly me out here and I and return the favour so I, so I can enjoy Vegas a little bit whilst you're cutting weight to fight. Oh, I love it. I love it. Um, Jack, tell us a bit how about you got started into martial arts. Obviously, your dad is one of the most well-known figures in Wales, but how did it all begin? I started really young. Um, I was six years old. My father took me to a little kickboxing club. And, I, and I, you know, I think at the time, I, like, it, wasn't, it wasn't really for self-defense or nothing. I think it was just keep, keep me active, get me out the house for a couple of hours a week. And... Um, couple of months later he started training jiu-jitsu at the same club um so I, I stuck it out there for a few years got my black belt in kickboxing and um he went on to open his own gym then which was Tillery Combat uh, in 2007 and that's when I started my sort of BJJ and my um my MMA training I would have been 12 or 13 years old little short chubby kid um and there was no other kids at the gym so I came up tough you know I came up hard sparring with the men rolling with the men and um, it just went from there, you know, I, I look back on it and it was, it was the best one I ever done, to be honest, coming up in our environment with, with all the men, because I could never rely on, I never had no physical attributes anyway, I was a little chubby kid, but grappling with full grown men and sparring with full grown men, you can't rely on obviously overpowering them or using your strength. Yeah. It had to be pure technique. And, you know, it was a rough like two years. And then all of a sudden I was hitting like 15, 16, 17, and I was subbing like, I level blue belts, I level purple belts. I was sparring with the pros and holding my own. And um, yeah, man, it just took off from me. Obviously, when, when I had a good amateur career, um, went on to Cage Warriors, won the belt there. And, and, and now we're in the UFC. Um, the, the gym, I mean, the first gym we had was uh, under a nightclub cellar. Then the nightclub doesn't even exist no more. It was, it was probably smaller than this hotel room. And um, now we got a proper state of the art facility, me, me and my father. It's, it's our gym between us. Obviously, he, he, he's the boss. He runs everything. I just, uh, I it's just a couple of pictures, couple of pictures on me of me on the wall and all that. But um, the facility we got now, is, you know, is unmatched in the, in the UK. It's one of the top ones in Europe. So we've come a long way, and um, we intend to keep going up. Obviously, you know, the sky's the limit. Yeah. One thing I definitely noticed from that documentary was the state of the art facility you had there. I couldn't believe it up in the valleys. Like, uh, what's it like with the, the just the team you have up there? Like, literally in that state of the art. Uh, 
facility just training nonstop, bec- like becoming like aiming to become world champions. What's that like? It's been unbelievable. Like um, we're so fortunate now. We, we've obviously I, I try and explain to, like some of the youngsters. Like we got a couple of like 15, 16 year olds who got ambitions of the UFC and, and everything. And um, I try and say to them like when I was your age, my father was a blue belt in BJJ. Um, he was also a striking coach. You know, he was also a wrestling coach. There was no such thing as strength conditioning. There was no such thing as as get you know going to the gym and doing doing your cardio in the morning. I was like, now we've got all that under one roof. You know, we've got SNC area, we've got treadmills, we've got a full size cage, we've got a wrestling coach, a Thai coach, my old man's the MMA coach and the grappling coach, we've got a boxing coach, we've got a full time physio, we've got meal prep at the gym. So to to have something like that where I'm from is unheard of and like it's probably some people maybe not don't appreciate like the, the area I'm from is, is there's literally nothing about, you know, you either play football or rugby, that that's it, that's just your two options. So to have like that that sort of facility and, and that sort of opportunity for the youngsters coming through now and for people like myself is unbelievable. Like the team we've got now, I mean, we've got like John Phillips is with us now. Obviously, Brett Johns has been with us for so long. Scotty and, and, and all the other Swansea guys have, have, have come up. Um, we've got like, our, between our amateur and our pros, we've probably got like 15, 20 guys who all got potential of being world champions. And like, I mean, we, had an, we, we took a team to an amateur show a couple of weeks back. I think we had... Um, eight fighters on the card and we went seven and one and the, and the one loss w- was a robbery. So the level of like these amateur boys now were, were, were whooping me some days in the gym. And I'm like, you know, this is exactly why I need the level. I might need to be getting pushed like this day in, day out. There's, there's no good being the top dog all the time. And yeah. um, that's exactly why I've gone out at the gym and with, with the coaches as well. You know, they're all world-class. Yeah, it's Ross, what, Ross, what you, what you make of the way the, the scene in Wales now it is like, it is exploding now. Obviously, you have Jack here. We had Mason on like last week. Like, what's your overall thoughts on the the Welsh scene right now? Well, I, I suppose for young Welsh lads growing up, uh, I suppose and girls as well, because Corey McKenna is in the UFC now as well. Uh, shout out to her too. I suppose growing up, you probably were like, they were like, oh, you want to be the next Gareth Bale, or maybe you want to be the next Dan Bigger or Alwyn Jones. And now there's a third avenue there. You know what I mean? They've seen Mason Jones, they've seen Jack Shore, they've seen Corey McKenna. You know, you can ploy your trade at the top level, the very highs of the highs. And I suppose this is a, a third avenue for those for those guys, which is something to consider when, when you're growing up if you want to be a sports star. So I think like it's massive for Wales as a country. Um, I don't know what the coverage is like over in Wales. Uh, I assume it's something similar to Ireland that you probably don't get as much as you should. No. Um, probably government funding is probably at zero. That's what it is here in Ireland for martial arts. But I do think in, in years, times will change. I do think... Um, slowly but surely, those barriers will get broken down. And I think it will be viewed as differently, especially when you look at um, in Ireland, like the Olympics, like, you know, obviously Katie Taylor is one of our biggest sports star ever. Uh, Kelly Harrington just won a gold medal there as well uh, for Ireland the Olympics. You know what I mean? Like combat sports are something that, you know, exists from the start of time. You know what I mean? Now, I think Dana White always sort of famously said, you know, if you go the whole way back to cavemen, you know, one thing that people always gathered around to watch was fights. And that's not going to change anytime <laughs> soon. So uh, I just think, oh, I'm sure, Jack, you know more than us, but I'm sure, you know, you probably see those small glimpses of the landscape changing. And as you were saying, when you were growing up, the facilities were fairly shitty and, like, they've developed. And um, if you look at the kids who are starting now, look at the facilities they're starting with. Yeah, they've, it's incredible. They've got such... Um, and don't mean on like people like, you know, myself, Brett Johns, um, Jack Marshman, John Mason, Corey... We haven't done bad, you know, considering we came up how we did. But the you're facility- doing great. You're doing absolutely great. You're <laughs> yeah. undefeated. Like, what's <laughs> bad? <laughs> what do you know? Uh, no. <laughs> the facilities and stuff they got now, like, like you said about it being a third avenue. I'm, there's a kid that trains with me now, um, Yoan, and uh, and he he's coming up 16. He's in his last year of school, and, and like he he's got his art set. Like, it's a genuine career choice for him now. Like, he, he's. He's, he's going to do a bit of work on the side of his old man and he's going to train full time from the age of 16. And it's like, I try and explain to these kids, like, that, w- that was impossible when I was 16. You know, I was I was 21 fighting for cage warriors and still battling cars three days a week, you know, and, and, and training around that. And that was, what, five years ago? And I mean, in such a short space of time, like, where, where the Welsh have brought through the UFC, now there's kids coming up who are thinking, do you know what, maybe... Maybe I'll just just get my my trade behind me or whatever in college, and, and I'll just do two days work a week, and I'll, and I'll go full full time training the rest. Like the fact that that's even an option or even a thought process for them is is insane because at, at 
is, is a good thing, you know, but at their age, you know, it was never nothing like that for me. I had to work, I had to go to college, uni, work part-time and then mix my training around that. And, and so think of the head start they're going to have by, by pretty much being full-time athletes from the age of, say, 16, 17, yeah. 18. You know, and I like to think I had like I was one of the first guys in Wales training full time at, at mm. 21 years of age. But you look now, this kid's like four or five years younger than me starting off, and it's like the, the level in maybe five, ten years' time is just going to be up there again. You know, it's just going to go further and further and further. I know, I know. It's it's something we're really looking forward to. But the main reason we have you on, Jack, is because you're taking on Ludwig Schaulinian this Saturday on uh, on UC Vegas 36. Uh, you've had multiple changes of your of your opponents in the last like couple of weeks. Um, it's a good job we didn't do the interview last week because we had to do another one because there's been about <laughs> three pull out since then. I know that that's the thing. It's all timing, isn't it? But like Jack, <laughs> you you finally know who the man is you're taking on. Um, oh, when you. Hopefully, <laughs> you know who knows. You might he, there might be another change, but uh, now that now that you're like right locked in now, it's fight week, it's game week. What um what what do you what do you see in your opponent? And like, are you just like looking past? Like, are you is it even uh, are you do you see yourself taking on yourself sort of, or do you see this just as another guy stepping stone, keep going towards the title? Yeah, so like I'm not I'm not necessarily someone who's like massive into game planning. I obviously take into account my opponent's strengths, their weaknesses. You know where the fight will be toughest against them, where the fight will probably be easiest against them. But a lot of the time, I just try and go out there and fight off my instincts because of things like pullouts and, you know, anything can happen in a fight. You can pick up an injury, you can pick up a cut, or your plan A may not be working, so you've got to go to plan B, C, and D. So I, I always try and just go out there and, and fight my fight and, and, and go with the flow. You know, I'm, I'm a well-rounded fighter. Um, I feel comfortable on the feet in the clinch or obviously on the ground. So... You know, wherever the fight goes, I, I like to think I can take it where I want to and, and look for my easiest path to victory. Obviously, I haven't looked at um, Ludwig. We haven't like no sparring or anything like that to prepare for him because you know the the late replacement. But he's a, you know he's a scrappy guy. He comes forward. He, he likes to wrestle. So we'll take it as it comes. You know, I said I was going to strike last time when I fought a wrestler, and I ended up turning into a wrestling match myself and taking him down. So we'll see how it goes when we're in there. Um, I've got ideas of, of, of how, I can, how I can get the victory quite fast. But, um, you know, a fight's a fight. You know, any, anything can happen in there. So we'll, we'll take him as it comes, but I'm very confident. Yeah, that's definitely one thing uh, I, I want to bring up that I brought up, the opponent change. But what about the venue change? Because that was probably uh, a bigger disappointment for you. Yeah. Um, what, where were you when you got the phone call saying it's no longer Vegas? Or, sorry, it's no longer London, it's now Vegas. And how disappointed were you that you didn't get to fight in front of uh, what could be as close to a hometown crowd as he can get. Yeah, I think I was in the gym. Um, I was doing S and C upstairs with my my strength conditioning coach Greg. And uh, funny enough, my father was training over the other end of the gym, and uh, he comes over. We got like a group text, me him and my manager Graham, and uh, we just, you know, they said, "Look, London's off. We're uh, we're going to Vegas." So um, it, it was it was a bit of a kick in the nuts, to be honest, because. I, I really want to fight on one of these like Europeans or UK cards in the UFC to, to show them the type of support and, and follow I've gone in the UK. Like back when I was fighting in Cage Warriors, um, you know, I'm selling out four or five thousand seat arenas in Wales. And, and I've also got a massive following in, in England as well. We're a lot and lot of English fans, Scottish fans, Irish fans. So I think if we had had that show in, in London, we would have seen we would have seen like they, they would have seen, sorry, like yeah. how big how big a deal I am over here. Um and obviously, it would have been nice for my friends and family to come watch it. I am fought in front of a crowd now for two years. Um, a lot of my supporters haven't been able to watch me since my last fight in Cage Warriors, so we're talking two and a half years. So it would have been nice to, to get that one for them. But it is what it is. You know, we, we can't, I couldn't dwell on it for too long. I had to get my head around it pretty sharpish and think, like, right, we're going out there. So let's just focus on getting it done. Uh, obviously, financially, it is better for me to fight in London, but. The only good thing with Vegas is I feel like I'm isolated for, for 10 days. You know, I'm, I'm out yeah. here for 10 days. And yeah, like I miss my missus, my family, my, my dog. I miss being mm. home. But I, I do feel like when I'm out here, it's almost as if I'm preparing my mind for war as well, not, not just my body, because I'm away from everything I love. I'm away from like the comforts. And, and, you know, I'm eating while the UFC API are telling me. So there's there's no temptation to go in the fridge and pick up a bit of this and a bit of that. You know, it's like <laughs> tell us about like, it. I'm, I'm, I'm your I'm your business. And like I, I said it to a couple of guys. You know, I'm not you. Like people say, you know, you're so lucky going to Vegas. I'm like, I'm not going out there for an holiday. I'm out here 
I'm out here for business. Like when, once yeah. the business is dealt with, maybe we'll have a, we'll have fucking 18 hours to enjoy ourselves before we fly home. But um, that's the only positive of, of fighting out here. I, I do feel isolated and, and, and I feel like there's no distractions. And the I think being away from like my family and stuff like that, it, it makes me more hungry to do well and, and, and make them proud because then I can go back home to them on a high rather than on a low. So that's the only positive. But of course, I, I'd much rather fight in the UK and, and let all my fans come and watch. Yeah. Jack Another thing you just touched on there as well was your mind. Do, do, like, obviously, you do training for every like every mixed martial art there is. Is there anything you do for your mind for to strengthen your mind? Is that do, do like um I don't know, like meditate or anything? like because like a lot of these pull pull outs could really mess up with your with your mind and stuff. And also being fourteen and oh, it's you know, I mean do, as 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 the, as hard you, as the longer you remain undefeated, there's more and more pressure. Is there anything you do for your mind to like just sort of release? Um, I don't. I don't specifically like see a mind coach i don't meditate anything like that but a, a big thing for me um i stu- i believe it or i studied uh, psychology in uh, in university and uh one thing i picked up from that was like positive reinforcement and when you're on your own and when, when you're sort of having those maybe negative thoughts blocking them out with with positive reinforcement and the it's almost like a state of meditation for me is when i'm running so I run for like an hour a day most days, you know, through the week and, and often on the weekend. I just just something I enjoy doing and obviously it's good for, for training, good for cardio, good for the weight as well. And I find a lot of the time, like the, the hour mark will come on the runner and I'll be like, where the fuck have that hour gone? You know, it's just almost as if I've, I've zoned out and I often find myself, I'll start thinking about the fight, thinking about scenarios, zoning in on it, positives, what could go wrong, you know, what I'm going to do to stop it going wrong. Um, you know where it's like running through every scenario in your head, but I'm always fortunate. I've always been quite uh, mentally tough. You know, I've never been, I've never been someone who sort of got caught up in my own thoughts and my own emotions, especially when it comes to fighting. Um, you, you see it with me in there on the walkout and on the night. I'm, I don't feel no emotion. I'm not going in there angry or hyped up or feeling the pressure or feeling low. Like I'm just going in there. There's a man in front of me. This, this is this is my job now to take him out, and then everything else that comes after, we deal with it after. So. I've, I've just suppose I'm quite fortunate that I'm I'm fairly mentally strong. My mind's pretty bulletproof, you know, without any training. And I'm not. I've got teammates that do like the mind coaching and stuff like that, and it works well for them. But it's just something I've never felt like I needed. Yeah. It, who do you listen to when you are running? It's it's not Tom Jones, is it? No, no. It's, to be honest, I don't listen to much music. I, I, if I'm doing a sprint session, I'll listen to a bit of like Oasis, a bit of ACDC, stuff like that. I'm a big Oasis fan. If if anyone. Didn't, didn't already know, but um, well, they get back together. <laughs> fucking doubt it. <laughs> call, them, call them both out after this weekend. Say you have to get away. It's back together. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> when they ask me what I want next, I will say an Oasis reunion. There we so, go. There we go. You heard it here first. You heard it here first. But um, <laughs> to be honest, this podcast mainly like I'm a big fan, big fan of podcasts like um, Joe Rogan podcast, James English, Energized, uh, Energized podcast. Um, <laughs> Theo Vaughn, I'm a big fan of Fighter in the Kid, just stuff like that. Just and I think that helps me zone out because you know, running's not 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 easy, especially that like you get up and do it and, and yeah. listening to something like that, I can take my mind off what I'm actually doing, focus on the on, on the earphones and, and, and go from there. But don't be wrong, when we're getting dark and it in the red zones and uh we've got to put a bit of oasis or a bit of ACDC on it to get me through. Jack, here here's something that I'm interested to ask about. Obviously, uh, you know, your goal is to go and raise the UFC bantamweight title in one of the toughest divisions possible. But where would headlining a show in Wales rank next to winning the UFC world bantamweight title? That's right. It's on par, right up there. Like, I mean, not even the Millennium Stadium. Like, if, if we could do it in a football, in the Cardiff City Stadium, I know they've got a the roof is the problem, something like that. Um, I know they're building... Um, like an indoor arena in Swansea now with 20,000 seats. To headline something like that would be unreal. Obviously, the ultimate dream is um, is is the, oh, it's the Prince of Bartley Stadium now, sorry, not the Millennium, is, is in there. You know, do the old Joe Calzaghe in front of 80,000 fans. But, um, you know, that, one, that one's, we got, we got, maybe have to get a smaller show in Wales first before we get a big one. But that's right up there for me to, to do something like that. To me, that, that means more than like titles. That, that's legacy shit, you know. That's, that's stuff people, Will tell their kids and their grandkids about you know the time they watch Jack Shaw fight in the Prince Bartley or the time they watch Jack Shaw headline the UFC in Wales, win, lose or draw. That that's the stuff. Yeah. You know, but how, how would that make your dad feel, by the way? Oh, I, 
he obviously he'd be over, over the moon. Yeah. His, his nerves are bad enough as it is on fight night. They're <laughs> about fighting in the Millennium Stadium. But um, look, it, that's the stuff like you take to the grave. That's the, that's like titles come and go, accolades come and go. But but headlining a, a, a massive card on, on the biggest show in the world in your hometown country, I don't think there's much that's going to beat that. You know, I think the UFC should look at doing a show in the Principality Stadium one year, Wembley the next year, and maybe uh, the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium the following year, like wh- whatever order they want to do them in. But I think why not try a stadium show and why not try it in England? Maybe start with the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium because like that was like built for you know non-footballing events as well. I think I think it's definitely doable. I know they get um, they get funny about like the open roof situation, yeah. but mm. you know Eddie Ewan does it all the time. It's like Danny Joshua's fought in, in, in open open rooms a lot of the time. You know, as long as you've got the big uh the big rig up in the middle to keep the, the fighters and, and, and the and the equipment dry, I don't see what the issue is. You know, pe- people have spent three days in Reading Festival getting soap, so I don't think they'll give a fuck about <laughs> it. I don't think they'll give a fuck about a night in uh, in the Prince of Alti or, or in Cardiff City Stadium, put it that way. Yeah, yeah well, that, like with yeah. the talent the UK has, like you know, yeah. Paddy Pimlet, Darren Till, like who say like Conor McGregor couldn't go and won those cards as well. Ian Gary. Uh, Ian Gary, you know, Dean Barry. Mason Jones, Dean Barry, Jack Shaw. The, the list goes McKenna. on. Like, <laughs> like it really, yeah, really yeah, does yeah. go on and on forever. You know, oh, Leon Edwards as well. Better not forget Rocky because uh, yeah. loads of people forget Rocky and he's the man. Uh, so, like, you know, the talent across the UK and Ireland is absolutely frightening. And I do think that stadium shows are well within reach. Yeah, without a doubt. It's, um, it's only a matter of time. Like, Leon's pretty much you know, there for a title shot. Um, if Darren wins on the weekend, it wouldn't surprise me to see him have a title shot. You've got people like Arnold Allen who, who's creeping up there. Obviously myself. You know, I know Mason and Paddy uh, and, and those guys are really on the, in the UFC run, but like give them two, three years, I'm sure they're going to be right up there as well. So, yeah. you know, even if it's not Wales, like even if it's Anfield or, or like you said, the Tottenham Stadium, to, to fight in a stadium show in the UK would be unreal. Like, that'd be someone that I would love to rank. I mean, it hasn't necessarily got to be me headlining in Wales. That's the ultimate, but I'd love to fight in a stadium anywhere in the world. So wh- why not do it in the UK? Jeez, you gave Paddy, uh, Paddy the Buddy a hard on there when you mentioned Anfield. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, obviously, Jack, this weekend isn't actually pay-per-view, but I'm telling you, like, the, the whole, like, European scene are, like, are going to have their eyes glued to it. And it's great to see like the progression from a lot of fighters from moving com- from Cage Warriors into the UFC as well. And like Cage Warriors come back now with another trilogy and we can't wait for that. But like this weekend, I think it's going to be one of the biggest cards of the year. Ross, would you agree? Yeah, well, definitely from a European standpoint, like all eyes are on this card. It is a massive card. Um, we love seeing the Cage Warriors guys make it over into the UFC and how they get on as well. Uh, I think, does your dad run a Cage War- Warriors Academy car- show as well? Yeah, he runs um, the Welsh Academy, him and uh, Colin. So it used to be uh, Pain Pit Fight Night. So that's my little claim to fame. I remember winning the Pain Pit um, amateur belt against um, uh, Mike Figlat, who, who fights for Cage Warriors now. Yeah. <clears throat> and I always tell people, like, I, I'm, on the, I'm the uncrowned two-time Cage Warriors champ because technically Pain Pit <laughs> is now Cage Warriors Wales. So I was like, I won the Academy belt before it was even called the Academy. <laughs> And Jack, uh, one thing I did want to touch on is this division. Like this division is absolutely insane. You have yeah. Piotr Jan, you have Aljamain Sterling, TJ Dillashaw, Corey Sandhagen, Marlon Marias, Jose Aldo, um, Dominic Cruz. <laughs> you know, is your favorite Mike come out of retirement? Uh, you have Pedro Munoz. Like the, the list goes on and on and on. This, this is, I wholeheartedly say this is the best division in the entire UFC. Mason Jones on last week saying lightweight division was the best. I think the bantamweight division is the best. Uh, I really, really do. What does that excite you? Does that make you nervous? Or how do you feel about how stacked this division is? No, I love it. I mean, I've never like I, my attitude in this game has always been like even in, as an amateur, even starting off in cage like if I want to be the best in the world or the best I can be, then I've got to fight these good guys. I, I'm, I don't want to be in a division that's dead. And, and look, look at uh, look how good Mighty Mouse was. Like yeah. he was, he's undoubtedly probably the pound for pound number one. But because the division at the time was a little bit weak, he doesn't get really any credit for how, for how good he was. You know, where you look at like someone like John Jones, despite all the controversy, you look at how stacked the division was when he was on his run. He's the one that people always talk about being, you know, being the best. So if I'm going to be in any division in the UFC, I want to be in one that's stacked and, and full of talent. I know there's no easy fights, but 
you know, I knew when I signed the UFC contract that, that from here on out, every fight's going to be tough. You know, that, that's why I signed up for and, and that's why I'm ready for. You know, I got in, the, I got in this to, to either be the best in the world or, you know, get taken out trying to be the best in the world. I'm not, I'm not trying to pad my record or, or pussy foot around or look for the easy routes. Uh, you know, I, I, I want to be up there with the best of them and I want people to look and say, look, you know, fit Blake the tank, he, he put on a line and he, he was one of the best that the Wales has ever seen. That That's that's my ultimate goal in this sport, to to be the Joe Calzaghe of MMA in Wales. So, you know, big, strong, fast, big hitters, good submission, good wrestling. I, I'm happy to take them all on. It's just a matter of, you know, beating the next guy and then beating the next guy and then beating the in a division like it's a so strat stacked anyway, there's no fast route to the title. You just gotta plod away and, and, and take up those guys in front of you, and, and that's what I'm prepared to do. And would you like to get in there with a Dominic Cruz or Jose Aldo before they retire? Yeah, I'd love to. I mean, um, like I, I thought Aldo would be done by this point, but he's on like a resurge, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him fight for the belt again. So but people like you know, Cruz, Edgar, um, Faber, even, mm. you know, there's there's some legends there. There's some definite legends in the game. I grew up like Growing up, Frank Yeager and Dominic Cruz, two, two of my favourite fighters. Ever. Like Frank Yeager, I'm a proper fanboy of. Dominic Cruz, I used to love watching him fight. I remember watching Faber back in the WEC days. So imagine, you know, being me getting to say, you know, one day that I get to step in the name of one of those. But, you know, there's no disrespect. There's, there's nothing but, you know, respect and admiration for those guys. But what, what a chance that would be to, to share, share the cage with, with one of the legends. You know what I mean? I- I but suppose one of those things when your idols become your rivals, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. Keep, keep pushing and one day the idols become the rivals. And w- one other person in the division who I, I think always sparks controversy is what would you think if UFC came to you with the name TJ Dillashaw? Would you have to take any second thoughts about it? Like, you know, do you disagree with the way he came back into the division? He's almost number one contender again. Or what are your thoughts on him? No, I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't second look at it at all. Um, I do disagree with uh, what he did, and, and I think he should have been punished for longer. I don't think two years, like especially like it wasn't as if it was a tainted supplement or something. You know, you openly come out and admit it to it, but it is what it is. He's he's back. He looked good in his last performance, and watching his last fight would, would just just make me more excited to fight him. You know, he's so good everywhere, um, and he's he's a bit like. I find him a bit like myself in the sense of you can see he's openly looking to, to engage and, and finish the fight. He's not looking to cruise by on a points victory. So that, that's someone I'd like to gain there with down the line as well, is old, old TJ. But um, obviously, like you said, after that last fight, he, he'll more than likely fight uh, the winner of Jan and, um, and Aljamain. Another person looking at the division as well is Sean O'Malley. I know we did, we, had, we had, haven't mentioned him once, but it, it, like... The way Sean sort of, it looks like he's taking his eyes off the prize. He's like going out, hanging out with 6'9 and all that sort of stuff, which looks like great crack, but when you're a fighter and then you look at yourself, Jack, the way you just, like, you're like a monk. Like, if you take your eyes off the prize, I mean, you start slipping, you know? Yeah, I think, um, to be honest, I, I think with Sean, he's got the, the social media game crack. I think yeah, he's very... Definitely. <laughs> definitely, very, yeah. very good at, you know, he's got his image, and I think he's very good at implying that this is how he behaves, so he's out partying, out hanging about with 6 9 But, you know, I, I, I don't buy into it. I, I, I think he's still in the gym every day. He's obviously very talented. You can see in his fights that he's very talented. You don't get that talented through, through partying and, and training once a week, you know. Um, if you did, I'd be world champ. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'd be the tag team champs. <laughs> but look, you know, what, what he does is up to him. I suppose it is like the lifestyle he's leading. It, it'll, it'll catch him up eventually. But, you know, credit where he's due. He's looked very good in his in his last two fights. Um, and and, we'll, and we'll, see, we'll see who they give him next. And I think you'll, you'll, because he's such a big star, I think they'll start to push him up the rankings. Now they know he's got a lot of... Um, He's got a lot of pull in terms of pay-per-view and, and getting eyes on, eyes on the sport. So, But he's definitely one we could see in the future as well. Yeah, options are always good. But like, uh, like obviously, people are tuning in now and they can't wait to see you compete this week. And this is also the first time you've been in our show, so it's great for the people that follow us to check yourself out. And like, I'm sure everyone's buzzing for this weekend. But before we get back into your fight, what other fight on this card this weekend are you actually looking forward to watching as well? Because obviously, Paddy's making his debut. Darren Till's on a huge fight as well. Like, What, what fight are you looking uh, and saying that's a really good one to look out for? Buy your own, buy your own, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm looking forward to, obviously, Darren and Brunson, just because of how, how high level the two of them are. Um, I'm looking forward to Paddy to to see how, I, I'm not, I haven't really watched the guy he's fighting, but it, it'll be nice to 
to see him in the in the UFC gloves. That's been a long time. Like I remember being one and all when Paddy was Cage Warriors champion. In, in you know, so it's nice to finally see him get a shot. An interesting one that I've I've got my eye on really is um, Modestus and Khalil Roundtree. Yes. Um, because I think it's his last chance saloon in, in, in a way for both. And I, and I love Modestus and I speak to him a lot and we keep in touch. And, you know, I think he knows it's, it's, it's sort of kill or be killed in this one. Um, I think he lost his last two, Moddy. So he, he knows he, he yeah, needs Yeah, he lost to crew, And then I think that the first one, the, the cage sort of opened or something and you, someone stood up and they nearly fell out. I think he won his first one. He lost yeah. the crew and then he got robbed, um, which, which, as we know, doesn't mean a lot in the UFC. You know, you're, you're still there. <laughs> So he, he knows he needs a win, you yeah. and and I've I've heard that uh, it's Khalil's last fight or maybe his retirement fight. So mm-hmm. I expect them two to come out with a bang, and, and I'm sure that'll be an exciting one. Obviously, I'm rooting for my guy Modi, but uh, it's a tough fight, but but one he's capable of winning, you know. So that that that's uh, that'd be my uh, my pick for fight tonight anyway, because I just see them two coming out and exchanging. And then you look forward to. No, it just, I might have, like obviously, obviously I'm looking for the Paddy competing because like the mental hype that's going on. I see Jack, you've obviously done loads of media in the build up for this as well, and that's why we appreciate coming on now. Although I think we're the first interview you've had with the official opponent, which is great. But uh, yeah, pa- like look, Paddy's going to bring eyes in, and that's just great for everyone on the card, and that's just going to blow up the the European scene as well. So that's it's brilliant for everyone. Yeah, I'm just going to give an honorable, honorable uh, shout out to Tom Aspinall as well. He's he also got a late uh, pound change as well, so he's fighting someone else new as well. So uh, shout out to Tom Aspinall as well. But uh, it's all about the tank this weekend. Yeah, Jack, what's the rest of the week look for, look like for yourself in in the build up to this weekend? UFC Vegas 36 taking on Ludwig Sholinian on Saturday, September fourth. Um, so it's Wednesday. Well, no, fucking it's not Wednesday. It's Tuesday today. So um. We we cleared now. We've had our COVID tests back. We we were clear, so we, we can't we can't leave the hotel um, for the PI until tomorrow because of the contender series. Um, but we can obviously go, use the pool, use the gym, stuff like that. I got to collect my kit and do all the posters and all that today. Tomorrow then is um, a little bit of um, stuff over the apex, like um, p- production stuff. Um, what else? I got social media stuff, interviews. Uh, and then Thursday, obviously, we just chill out all day and, and, and cut a bit of weight in the night then. You know, the fun part, and everyone loves doing it. Oh, uh, the, best, the best part. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that done. Friday, we weigh in, stuff our face, within reason, of course, and then uh, put on a show Saturday. What, what's, what's the meal that you're looking forward to most on Friday? Friday, my tradition after weigh in, obviously, the PI do your food as well, but my tradition is I always have a um, spaghetti bolognese. And if I've done that... I've done that ever since, no lie, ever since my first my first pro fight, since my first actual weight cut, because I never should cut weight as an amateur. And my father cooks me one every single fight. So, um, so it's a winning uh, tradition. It's the winning. Is that, hey, we haven't done bad at it so far. For, 14 spaghetti bolognese, 14 wins. So hopefully we can make a 15 from 15 this week. Don't oh, be telling Sh- Hopefully Shaolinian's not listening to this. He's like, right, bolognese. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I want to see a, a, on your Instagram story a bolognese on, on uh, Friday. I want to see what I want to see how good it looks. Oh, it'll, it'll be on it loaded with fucking cheese, I expect. But uh, extra you know, parmesan. Oh yeah, it'll be the works. Let me tell you. Jack, what would be like a, a number one cuisine? You you from uh, from Wales? What would be like the, the Welsh number one cuisine? Cool. Well, like uh, I don't like, know. Like we t- we'd say like uh, what would you say here, Russell? Would you be like typical Irish? Yeah, like a coddle or like you know what I mean? What's a, a real shoe? Like, a shoe. You know what would yeah. you what would your thing be? Yeah, stew's a big one over here. Probably like the one that everyone seems to eat all the most is like a Sunday roast. Like you okay. see, you see people in Wales eating Sunday roast on like Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. Like it's not really a Sunday roast over here. It's just everyone calls it a cooked dinner. You just have it <laughs> whenever you want. So that's a, that's a big one in Wales. That's a big seller. I can't wait to have one when I go on and tell. All I'm thinking about is food this week. So yeah. uh, plain Ross, plain Ross. I've got everything listed in my phone. What I'm going to eat next week. Always blame the fat guy, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Real just- so uh jack thanks a million for your time i'm sure you'll probably uh got loads of other things to do today i'm sure you've got a few more of these to do but we really appreciate your time we will be cheering you on this weekend um if you are at home watching this video make sure to give it a like follow jack sure on all his social medias we'll be tagging him all week in it and give us a subscribe because that really helps our channel grow and then it provides a bigger platform for the fighters that we get on barry anything else to say Amen. So, guys, thanks a million for watching. 
as always, stay energized. Energized, Sha. Up the Irish. Been sussing you guys a couple of times. I've seen a couple of clips. I think you've done some interviews with Dylan Moran and that. But I, I, I saw. So keep going. Keep up the good work, guys.